All right, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Uh, just like every other morning, we're going to get started on the roller. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just sit on top of the roller for now. And start by rolling your cheeks. So we're tilting from side to side. Remember, we're just looking for uh, sore spots or spots that seem a little bit tight. And if you find one of those spots, try to sit on top of it. Uh, see if you can get it to relax. So sometimes that means taking a couple deep breaths, you know, pausing in one place, taking a couple deep breaths, trying to get that muscle to kind of melt over top of the ruler. If you need to cross your ankle over your knee to get more of a stretch on that muscle just to roll it, that will work too. And just looking for, you're just kind of searching around for sore spots. Let's go to the other side if you haven't already. And good, let's roll the back of your legs. So while we're rolling uh, your calves and your hamstrings, so from, from you know, your ankles all the way up to your butt, I'll explain today's circuit. Today's circuit, pretty simple. Uh, it's just four different movements. So the way we're gonna do it is there's no time on it or anything, but we are gonna do five rounds of 10 goblet squats or bodyweight squats and then 10 rows, uh, plank rows. So I'll show you those in a second. Then we're gonna do 10 squats, 10 RDLs, which are kind of like two leg deadlifts. Um, and then 10 goblet squats and 10 overhead presses. So it's, it's all easy math. Uh, each upper body exercise, or I should say each exercise is separated by a set of 10 goblet squats or body weight squats. Um, so we're gonna go five rounds of that, which means about 150 goblet squats this morning. So prepare yourself or uh, start thinking about what weight you should use, or uh, if you're not using a weight, it would be just body weight. All right, so let's put the roller on your shoulder blades. Rolling back and forth. You can put your hands behind your head and support your head. You can reach over your head. All right, so let's go ahead and set your hips on the floor. So your, the roller will be under your shoulder blades, hips will be on the floor. And we're just gonna do a couple like mini sit-ups. So we're starting to mobilize your spine a little bit. So just doing a couple mini sit-ups using the roller as the pivot, right? Then you're gonna move the roller up towards the middle of your shoulder blades and repeat that process. So we're just really, really gently starting to mobilize these joints. Let's move up again towards the top of your shoulder blades. It gets a little bit harder here because you don't have as much weight above your head. And that's good. Let's take the roller, turn it sideways, or I should say, turn it parallel to your body. You're gonna sit on the very edge of the roller and put the roller right down your spine. If you have a short roller, uh, it's not gonna be quite as easy, but um, so here we're just gonna open up, let your hands reach towards the floor like you're gonna give the floor uh, ceiling a hug. So we're just using this as a chest stretch. And from there, let's reach up in the letter Y. You're gonna reach up over your head. And now we're gonna slide down into that W shape. So we're doing a floor slide here basically, but because the, the roller has us off the floor, we're gonna get an even bigger stretch. So let's do 10 there where we reach up into the letter Y and down thinking about putting your elbows into your back pockets. Reach up into the Y down into the elbows into your back pockets. 
So here we're just uh, working on a shoulder stretch. We're doing a lot of push-ups with these home workouts. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our chest open, keeping that stretch. So don't reach up to the sky. Let your arms come down and stretch. There you go. Bend your knees, get your feet flat. So you should be like this when you, when you play. There you go. Try to keep your hands and your elbows level here. So we don't want your hands up towards the ceiling and your elbows down towards the floor. Try to keep them level, parallel to the floor. Okay, once you're done there, let's uh, roll over onto your side. We're gonna uh, pop the roller under your knee. We'll bring the roller up next to you. All right, we'll use this chance to kind of roll the inside of your leg. Let's bring your knee up. Your knee should be up even with your waistband. Okay, while we're on this side, go ahead and freeze. Uh, we're gonna go fingertips together, opening up like a book. So your chest points at the ceiling, let's open and close five times. Inhale as you close, exhale as you open. Make sure your fingertips always touch back together as you come up. Once you're done with five, we'll go ahead and switch sides. Start with rolling. So the roller should be parallel to your body as you're laying on your side. Again, we're looking for the most tender, most sore spots. And we're just going to roll over them. We'll try to get those spots to relax over the roller. All right, let's prop your knee up on the roller. You can make sure your shin is on the roller also, so you should just be fully relaxed there. Fingertips are together. We're going to open up like a book. And we close. So we're going to open and close five times. Inhale as you close. Exhale as you open. Okay, good. All right, so let's go to all fours. So you're gonna be in, the, we're gonna start off in this push up position. All right, so we're starting in a push up position. And then we're gonna push, push your tailbone up towards the ceiling and driving your heels down to the floor. Okay, so if you're a yoga person, this would be like a downward dog. And then we're just coming forward. So we're gonna do that five times. So it's lifting your tailbone up towards the ceiling, pushing your hips back, heels down. And we come forward again. That was two. Reaching up for three. Four. Coming forward, last time pushing up for five. And when you come forward this time, let's bring your knee up and through. We're gonna get into a pigeon stretch. So your shin's coming up and across. Now we're gonna go back up to the down dog. So we're doing, we're not gonna hold the stretch here. Let's go the other leg. So we're gonna alternate legs here up into that pigeon stretch. And then back to the down dog. Reaching forward with your hip or other knee. So we're gonna alternate knees here, sitting into a little stretch. Second time on the second leg. Let's do that one more time, pushing your hips up. First leg comes through. Pushing the hips up towards the ceiling last time, bringing this Second leg through. And good. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Okay, get arms moving in a circle, just little circles facing out to the side. 
We're going to be doing some shoulder presses today, so we want to make sure the shoulders get some movement this morning. So keep those little circles, but switch the direction of the circle. All right, let's make them big. Make sure we're staying nice and tall. Good posture here. Switch the direction. And good. All right, let's find some sort of uh, vertical thing that you can put your hand on. You could even just use a wall, but we're going to open up here, get a chest stretch. So whatever arm you're stretching or whatever side you're stretching, you're going to step forward with that foot. Right. So right now I've got my left hand on the wall and I'm stepping forward with my left foot. And keeping that same side, let's put your forearm on the wall. So now this should be a little different stretch. You're still going to be stretching your chest, but we get a little bit more stretch in the rotators. Again, we're just trying to keep, uh, keep your chest open here. Get a nice stretch in front. Let's switch sides. As you're doing this, try to keep your belly strong. Try to keep your posture nice and tall so we're not poking your chin forward. And bend 90 degrees at the elbow. Let me stretch again. Check in, make sure you're breathing here. Breath should go nice and deep into your belly. And good. Okay. Uh, just to get, get moving here, we're going to give your leg a hug and bring it up and across. Take that same leg and step out to the side for a lateral lunge. So we'll work that side five times, and then we'll go the other side five times. So pulling up and across, take that same leg, step out to the side for a lateral lunge. Stay on the same side for five. Now pick that leg up again. Stay on the same side for five each side. Okay, so we're gonna grab heel or grab your heel, go to your butt. If you need something to, to prop you up. You can use whatever a wall or a shelf or anything around you for help. But from here, we're gonna just hinge down. So we're, we're pulling your heel to your butt, try to keep your knees or our next, right next to each other rather than having one knee way in front. So we grab that heel, bring it to your butt, feel that hamstring or uh, feel that quad stretch. And then we hinge forward, try to get a hamstring stretch on the side that's standing on the floor. Let's do five each side. Sometimes coordinating your breathing with this helps so if you're having a, a challenge with the balance. Sometimes if you inhale as you're standing up, Exhale as you're uh, moving down, that helps. So we just start to coordinate the breathing with the movement. I guess it doesn't work for everybody. Okay, good. Um, so last one here, we do have a lot of goblet squats today, so we're gonna do the squat stretch. Four parts to this, right? Number one, you're gonna reach down Bend your knees as much as you need to to grab your big toe. So you're going to reach down, grab your toe. That's a one. Number two, you're going to pull your butt down to the floor. That's two. Number three, we reach up towards the ceiling. And four, we stand up. All right, so let's count it off together. We're going to do three of these. So number one, reach down, grab your toes. 
Number two, pull yourself down into that squat position. Number three, hands to the ceiling. And four, we stand. So that was a one. Let's do two more. One, two, pulling down into the floor. Three, hands to the ceiling. And four, we stand. Last one here. One, grab, a, uh, grab your toes. Two, drop your butt. Three, reach for the ceiling. And four, we stand. All right, good job. So um, when we, as we get into this, couple things. Goblet squats, pretty straightforward. If you're using uh, a weight, keep in mind we are doing 150 of these throughout the day, so the weight is up to you. Um, nice and uh, feet nice and flat on the floor. Oh, we can also do this with body weight, so you don't have to use a weight. You can also use body weight for these. You can also change it up as you go along. You're not uh, married to one weight or the other as you get going. Okay, so got, that's goblet squat. Plank row, a couple ways we can do this. Ideally, if you have two dumbbells, if you have a set of dumbbells, this is a good, uh, it's, this is a, it's a perfect fit for this circuit. But a plank row is you're in kind of this push up position, right? And then you're gonna lock everything up and row. And then we row on the other side. Row on one side, row on the other side. You're going to do 10 total, 10 total. So for only five rows each side. If you only have one weight, you can put your hand on a couch. You can, uh, you, you could do it on the floor. Uh, we've got a couple of yoga blocks here. So basically, uh, this just elevates my hand enough so that I can get a full row with the weight. In this, in this case, I just do five on one side, then switch and do five on the other. If you have no weights, it's totally okay. You can do the rowing motion, but it's gonna be pretty much just for show, okay? So elevate your hand however you need to if you only have one weight. If you have two, a, a set of dumbbells, that's perfect, okay? Uh, so 10 squats, 10 plank rows. 10 squats, 10 RDLs. And if you forget, we've got it written down right here. Okay, um, so RDL is just gonna be that hip hinge. Your hands are gonna be going right down to about knee level. Notice there's not a lot of knee bend here. You're hinging at the hips, coming up, hinging at the hips, coming up. So really think about shooting those hips backwards. Um, so it's not, it shouldn't feel like the squat. It should feel like a stretch down the back of your legs and using that stretch to help you stand back up. Make sure when you get to the top, you're nice and tall and strong like you're doing a standing plank. Okay, then 10 more squats. And finally, 10 overhead presses. If you have a, a pair of dumbbells, you're just gonna press like this. Um, if you have only one, you're gonna do five each side, right? And I, I like to take a staggered stance here on this, so like one foot in front of the other. So if I'm pressing with my left, uh, hand, or sorry, if I'm pressing with my right hand, my left leg will be forward, okay? Not totally necessary, but I'm only gonna have one weight, so I'm gonna do five on one side, then five on the other. So um, not a time circuit. You go through at your pace. We're gonna go five times, five times through this circuit. 10 squats, 10 plank rows, 10 squats, 10 RDLs, 10 squats, 10 overhead press, okay? So, We've got some work to do, We've got lots of squats to do. Pick your weight, and uh, I'll throw a timer on just for the fun of it. Okay, ready, and off we go. Starting off with those 10 goblet squats. You need to use the first round as a warm up, that's fine. Remember on those plank rows, you can modify however you need to. The whole goal is to keep your hips level with the ground. You shouldn't have to shift off to one side.
Remember on the RDL, your legs won't be locked. You should not have your knees locked out. Cool. You should not have your knees locked out. There you go. Knees should have just a little bit of bend to them. Oh, keep your chest up. On the RDLs, you should keep your chest up, shoulders back. Nice and strong, big chest. On the shoulder press, try to keep your shoulders square so you shouldn't be tilting off to one side. Square, shoulders level, parallel to the ground. Take as much rest as you need to in between. Might help to have a pencil and paper nearby because as you get more tired, you're going to start to wonder if you've done three or four sets or three or four rounds of this. to the side so you can see your knees. So try to stay right in the middle. On the goblet squat, if you have a mirror or anything, it's good to take a look and see if you are centered on that or if you're starting to sit into one side. Try to get nice even pressure with both feet. Just for your reference, we're at about five and a half minutes here. We just finished our second round. You might be ahead of us, you might be behind us. Okay, working at your pace here, it's all right.
Morning, Jan, you made it again. Good work. Get back on the routine, huh? If you forget where it is, or if you forget where you are, there's a good chance it's a goblet squat. over your head, not out to the side. Okay, we're through three rounds here. I enjoyed the plank row. About nine minutes into this. Did you like it? Um, I feel like I can use everything. And I One of the benefits of working out at home is uh, you can do it in your socks or your bare feet. So this is a good one because there's no jumping or anything like that associated with it. This is a good one to, uh, to go barefoot or just wear socks. It also kind of helps you uh, make sure your hand is in the right spot for the plank row. If your feet start sliding behind you, you know you've got your hand posted too far out in front of you. So sometimes being in your socks or being barefoot helps you do the exercises better. Plus you're working on a lot of like little foot muscles.
Good job, guys, keeping it up here. If you're on pace with us, we are heading into our last round. Okay, so we're done here. Um, if you're still going, that's on you. Keep going, go for it. Um, quick one today, I guess. Long warm up, 20 minute warm up, and about a 20 minute circuit. So, good job today, gang. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. We'll see you soon.